man, it is good to see you after the weekend. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Monday, October 16th. Now, you're probably already familiar with what I do here. I like to share with you hot penny stocks. These are stocks I find on any market that are under five bucks that have potential to make us money. Now, when I go searching for hot penny stocks, where do I go? Where's the pit of hot penny stocks? Well, it's not in the news presses or the filings. I am going to go look there, but not initially. That's not where the fire's at. That's the wood pile for the fire. The fire is the charts. I'm looking for heat in a chart. I'm looking for a chart that is receptive to trading. What I mean is I'm looking for a chart that when you look at it, you go, ooh, that looks good. Is there any news? <laughs> That's the one we're going to go investigate. We're going to go through the press releases and the filing, see if we can find a catalyst. If we find a hot piece of news to go with our hot chart, we got ourselves a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you on a regular basis. Well, this is a hot penny stock. Grid Battery Metals, ticker EVKRF. Now, we've already looked at this about five weeks ago, September 10th. This is an American lithium mining company in Nevada. There's quite a few of them there right now, and we need to focus on them because they're going to be making us a lot of money when they get the green light. And that's the problem here. Even though the president says we need lithium, we got to get it from our own country. It's taken years to get the ball rolling. We've only got one lithium mine company active in America. That is Silver Peak, ticker ALB. But we've got lots of other lithium mining companies. Now, they're not just sitting around twiddling their thumbs. They keep adding more and more land. It's amazing how big some of these mining plots are now. And they're doing more exploration, getting better readings, finding the richest sources. And believe it or not, Nevada is the second richest source in the entire world, second to South America, Chile and Argentina. And they are coming up with some really rich readings there. And EVKRF has mines in those rich areas right now. So her chart is not what I would call hot, <laughs> not by any means. It was a while back, all these lithium mining companies were running, even though they're not making any revenues. Everybody knows that when they get the green light, they're going to explode. They were all climbing for many a days, and then they all cooled off for many a days. And this one has settled on her new floor. She has tested it and shown us this is where she is laying, and she is ready to take off, at least in my opinion. Today was a very slow day. I think she was taking a break. Plus, we do have new news. We've got some updates, some very important news. So EVKRF, Grid Battery Metals, finished today just a little over 6.5 cents, and she did drop about 8% today. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. This is the better tier. It's better than the pink because you have to audit your financials to be here. That gives us true fundamentals. We can actually weigh the company up now. They've also got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. I tell you to look for these all the time because that's validated information. So we got validated numbers, validated information, looking good. And in case you were curious what this guy is here in the middle, 12G3, 2B certified, this means they have done everything they need to do as a foreign company because they are from Canada. That's what the F means at the end of their ticker there. They have done everything they can to certify themselves with America and report in English. I guess they could report in French. So we're getting it all in English. So what is this company about? Well, you know what they're about and we're not going to go too deep into it, but I do want to generally cover it. And then we're going to focus in on that news. Grid Battery Metals, Inc. is a Canadian-based exploration company. The company maintains a focus on exploration for high-value battery metals required for the electric vehicle market. Then they go on to tell us here what they own, but I know a better place to get information. We've jumped on over to the company's website, gridbatterymetals.com, and they tell us here that they are invested in four mining projects. Three lithium projects, all in the United States, all in Nevada. That is Texas Spring, Clayton Valley Project, and Bolt Canyon. And then they've got one nickel project up in British Columbia, Canada. This is Grid Nickel Group. Now, I did go through a lot of details about these projects in the last video, so I'm not going to rehash all of that. We will go over them briefly, but I'm really interested in sharing the new news, the updates with you. 
So Texas Spring. Texas Spring Project is located in Granite Range. That is southeast of Jackpot, Nevada, if that means anything to you. And their primary focus of exploration on this property was to uncover lithium clay deposits, which they did in a very big way. Now, there's some huge advantages to mining lithium in Nevada. It's easy to do. The lithium is coming from brine, which means water, or soft clay deposits, not hard rock. Now, this particular mine, the Texas Spring, it is in a very rich area. It is adjacent to the southern boundary of the Nevada North Lithium Project, which is owned by Surge Battery Metals. We've talked about them before, ticker N-I-L-I-F. Well, in 2022, Surge Battery Metals did a test on their property. Now understand, to be a source of lithium, you have to produce at least 100 parts per million. In Surge Battery Metals test in 2022, it produced results of 3,254 parts per million. And all you need is 100. So that is excellent. So here is Surge Battery Metals property, and this is Grid Battery Metals property. And you know what's interesting? The investors that put together Surge Battery are the same investors that put together Grid Battery. And some of the news we're going to look at today blows that number away. They just did a test in 2023 and more than doubled that number. And this is a pretty big project. It is four hectares large. Don't have a clue what a hectare is, do you? <laughs> That's okay. I didn't either. I'm not a farmer. I had to look it up. A hectare is equal to two and a half acres, roughly. Well, how big is an acre? Well, an acre is about a football field. So a hectare is about two and a half football fields, which would make Texas Spring about 1,000 football fields big. Now we've got an idea. Clayton Valley Project. Clayton Valley Project is located in Clayton Valley, Nevada. They too are bordering a very rich area. They're up against Silver Peak Lithium Project. This is ticker ALB. This is the only lithium producing mine in America. The only one, folks. There are lots of American mining companies that work with lithium, but none of them are in operations except Silver Peak. They've been in operations for over 100 years. Well, almost. They burned down their town in 1948 and the mine closed. Opened back up in 1966. And that's the only one working right now. All the rest of the companies are waiting for permission from the government. They tell us here that Clayton Valley's lithium is contained in both underground reservoirs, aquifers, in the form of salty groundwater called brine, and clay that features high levels of lithium. Now, this is a very interesting map, folks. I'm going to build this up a little bit for you. That blue area, that belongs to Grid Battery Metals. That is Clayton Valley Project. This purple area belongs to Silver Peak. This is the 100-year-old mining. They've been adding to it for a long time. It's huge and rich. Then you've got Pure Energy. This is another public company on the market. All the green area. And then Century Lithium. All the yellow area. Another public company on the open market. All of these companies are not producing except for Silver Peak. They are all in the same boat right now. This uh, mine is 930 hectares. Multiply that times two and a half football fields. Their third mine is Volt Canyon Lithium. This is a brand new project they just got. One of their projects is all the way north of Nevada. The other one is all the way south. This one is smack dab in the middle, and they're just now starting exploration on it. And so far, the results haven't been that great, but they qualify. They tell us here that although limited exploration has been conducted, surface samples from the region's newer data revealed up to 108 parts per million. That's only the surface. That's no drilling. So they're just getting started on this one. And their last project, Grid Nickel Group. This is located up there in British Columbia, Canada. They tell us that Grid Nickel Group consists of five claim blocks and three groups, Nickel West, Nickel Central, and Nickel South, all in the area surrounding Mount Sydney Williams, which is in close proximity to another mine that already has over $25 million invested into it, the Dakar Project, as well as the Baptiste deposit of FPX Nickel, another company on the major exchange. 
Now, they don't give us a lot of information here about this project. However, we did just get a news press about it, which is pretty exciting. The one thing I do see here is it's a big project. They have got 6,125 hectares already, and they have the option to acquire 100% interest and another 1,400 hectares. So it is a big operation. So let's get some information about that stock now. First thing we're going to take a look at is that relative volume for EV car. And it was shuttering today. Looks like she dropped about 80%, going from 178,000 down to 37,000. And I don't see any bad news anywhere, so I really can't explain that. Share structure for EV car. They tell us that the outstanding share count is about 187 million. With the insiders, management, they own about 77 million. Subtract that 77 million from that 187 million, that gives you our float of about 110 million. However, down here, they say as of October 12th, which was only four days ago, the float was 72 million. Well, I don't get the math. In either case, I'm going to presume that the float is somewhere between 72 million and 110 million. Not a bad float. We can live with it. Financials for grid battery is zilch. They're not making any money. No lithium mining company is in America except for ALB. But they do have a balance sheet we can take a look at. Money in the bank. They've got 1.2, let's call it $1.3 million. We know it's millions because we got to add three zeros to any of these numbers down here. Total assets, $2.2 million. <laughs> and look at their liabilities. $4,000. That's it. You know why it's probably that low? Because they own all their property 100%, right? What are the disclosures for the company? I don't think we have any. We got no disclosures here. So let's jump on into that news. Now we've actually covered a lot of the news for this company in the last video. So I'm just gonna pick up where we left off last time with just a little bit of overlap. We looked at this piece of news that came out September 6th. Grid Battery Meadows to begin work on its Texas Spring Nevada Lithium project. Now this does not infer that they are in operations and mining. No lithium company in America is mining right now outside of Silver Peak. They're just doing more exploration. And to that point, they came out with the news press on September 20th. Grid Battery Meadows completes phase one of its exploration plan at the Texas Springs Nevada Lithium Project. And we're going to dive into this in just a second. Another piece of news that we're going to dive into, this came out on the 28th of September. Grid Battery Meadows announces its plan to finance and list its subsidiary on the Canadian Securities Exchange. This is a spin-out. And then the last piece of news that came out a couple days ago, Grid Battery amends consulting service agreement with Triumph Holdings. Now, this deal was done a while ago, and we actually looked at this piece of news. This company and another company were hired to help them get their name out there to basically advertise for them. So let's take a look at these two pieces of news right here. This first one came out September 20th. Grid Battery Meadows completes phase one of its exploration of the Texas Springs Nevada Lithium Project. This is part of a methodical and systematic approach to high quality mineral exploration for this highly sought after metal in Nevada and will assist the company in determining next steps for the overall exploration plan, including but not limited to a subsequent drilling program. So basically, this is just helping them determine the most lucrative, the most profitable area to start mining in once they get the green light. Now, we've got some really juicy information right down here. I'm surprised to see it was thrown in here. Remember, I was telling you that Surge Battery Metals did another test this year for lithium. Well, let me remind you what it was in 2022 they had discovered 3,254 parts per million. And you only need 100 parts to be a source of lithium. So that was really rich. Well, on September 12, 2023, Surge announced that their results were 8,000 parts per million. Can you imagine that? More than double. 
Now, I'm not a miner. I don't know what the richest lithium is in America, but that is one of the richest numbers I have seen. The only other areas in the world that are richer are over in uh, South America, Argentina, and Chile. And that other piece of news. This one came out September 28th. This is a spin out. The company is spinning out their nickel project. All of their assets for the nickel project are going to go into a whole separate company and go on to the major exchange, and they're going to give dividends for it. Now, they tell us they are going to be giving one share for every 20 shares of the company you own. But I've got to admit, I don't know for fact what's going to happen here. They are spinning this out on the Canadian market, not the United States. I haven't heard anything about it being spun out on the United States. Well, they say that anybody that owns shares of GRID are going to get dividends in this company. Do Americans get dividends in a Canadian company? I've not seen that before. So I'm not real sure if Americans are going to get any of these dividends, but they make no comment for or against that in the news. So I really don't know. I guess I should contact the company and find out. Let's go take a look at this chart. So to chart grid battery metals, we're going to use my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I got this when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. And signing up with them, that was free too. So we are looking at EVKRF grid battery metals. This is a six-month, four-hour view, and that is the entire chart for this ticker. It was April 19th, the company changed her name from Nickel Rock to Grid Battery Metals. And it was then she hit her low, you might as well think of it as a 52-week low, of just under three cents. And then at the end of September, she hit her 52-week high of about 17 cents. Now you can see once she got over that 50-day SMA, she took off running. And right here, her first peak before she buckled under, that became our new floor. See her hit here, almost here, there, and that's where she's sitting right now. Now, it was right here at the end of August, she had a four-week run. A lot of lithium mine companies did. Even though they're not making revenues, they were still running. And there was a run here from $0.07 cents up to $0.17. Cents. You're looking at 150% uh, easy. Then we had three weeks of falling. And this isn't the only lithium mine company to have been falling. A lot of them have been. No real reason, all the way down to that new floor. She hit it hard, tucked underneath just a wee bit, came up on top, and she's sitting there right now. Volume is very light today. We have just got our 200-day SMA in the picture. I always presume the price is going to go to the new SMA, regardless of where it's at. Above the price, below the price. Well, it is above the price right now. Currently at 8.2 cents, and we're down here at 6.5 cents. I would expect, <laughs> just because I see it so often, I would expect this to jump up to that 200 and start giving heed and respect to it. Osculators, oh, they're kind of cool. Our PPO is pushing down and is underneath the pink line. MACD looks like she's trying to do a recovery, but she can't figure it out. It is pretty much sideways. RSI has been falling. She's dropped from a cool 46 to a very chilly 37. Coming down to our 20-day, one-hour view. Big drop right there, going from 17 cents all the way down to 6.1 cents. She jumped. She put herself over the 20, broke the 50, came down, sat on that 20, and everything right now got rejected. All of our SMAs are together right there. And she hit her head on that big knot and she came down to this support and she's sitting there wrestling right now. All of the SMAs look a bit dangerous. There's a lot of pressure there. So I would expect maybe this to dip more, but hopefully not lower than that low bubble right there. Our oscillators say she has down pressure on her right now, folks. Everything looks like it is still going down. Not strong, but still going down. Looking at our five-day, five-minute. All right, four days ago, we had a high of eight cents when she was above her 50-day SMA. When she broke that, she really lost her footing. The only thing that slowed her down, you can see right here, she was sitting on top of this resistance. She's fallen down, hit this low of 6.5 cents, and she looks like she's going sideways. We would hope she wouldn't go any lower. However, Keep your eye on her. 
I mean, just because she goes lower doesn't mean you run away. If people lower the price on something you want to buy at the store, do you leave it alone? No, the lower they make it, the more attractive it looks to you. That's what we're talking about here. So watch for the low. This would be a great entry price. I can't really think of her going any lower than this, not by much. So me, myself, I would pick up some of what I wanted here. If she dips more, you get more. You average down. You're going to feel good about her dipping then. And if she starts rising, you've got a good portion. Buy the rest and take off with her. So right now, she is at a buy opportunity. We're not talking about a run for this week. We're not talking about a run for this month unless something happens. And we don't know when that's going to be. All of the lithium mining companies are in the same boat. We are waiting for somebody to get permission. And they are all ready to run and make money. I like this company, folks. This is why I'm bringing it back up to your attention. You've got a second opportunity to get in. But do some more due diligence. Watch my first video, watch this one, and then go check up on some more details because it is your money you're investing. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Tee-da-dee-da-doo-doo-doo-pa-pa-dum-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa